Hey everyone, welcome to Devlog Zero of Crimson Hollow. My name is Courtney, and I'm the game designer behind this project. In this devlog, I'll be giving you a behind-the-scenes look at my development process, as well as some sneak peeks at what's to come. Before we dive into the game, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a visual artist and designer with a lifelong passion for creating art that tells stories and evokes emotions. I've been drawing since childhood, and at the age of 15, I started exploring digital art. Later in life, I decided to pursue a master's in visual communication design and took courses such as game design, visual communication, interactive design, character design, and typography. Last year, after I graduated, I knew I wanted to put all these skills I'd learned toward one big project, a video game. I've been a gamer for as long as I can remember, and I've always dreamed of creating my own game from scratch. I'm passionate about creating immersive gaming experiences that transport players to other worlds. After years of tinkering with different game engines and design concepts, I finally decided to take the plunge and create Crimson Hollow. So what is Crimson Hollow? Well, it's a cozy fantasy game set in a mysterious town called Crimson Hollow. You'll start your new life in a cozy little cottage as you explore the dark forest and mystical caverns, gathering resources to craft magical items using skills like mining, herbalism, and alchemy. As for inspiration, I've always loved games like Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, and World of Warcraft. I wanted to create a magical town where players could craft items, build relationships with quirky townsfolk, and enjoy a relaxing gameplay experience. I officially started designing Crimson Hollow on February 1st, 2023, and so far, I've made a lot of progress on the game. As an artist, I approach the game with a focus on visual design, dedicating countless hours towards creating art for the game. I determined the visual direction I wanted to take the game in early on. I aimed to create a unique visual style for Crimson Hollow that blended the captivating aesthetics of Hades, the charming world of Animal Crossing, and the magical wonder of Studio Ghibli. The combination of these influences gave me the inspiration to create a game with visuals that truly immersed the player in the cozy and mysterious world of Crimson Hollow. Since I knew I wanted the game to be isometric, I began by creating a tile set in Photoshop. Given that the game is set in a snowy town, I designed a diverse brick set with snow trap between the cracks as well as various lumps of snow and interspersed patches of grass to add visual interest. I also created a variety of trees, fences, stumps, rocks, and other elements that would populate the game world. While the exact time period of the game is not definitive, I drew inspiration from 19th century images and architecture to create a fairy tale feel of a bygone era. From there, I moved on to creating the complete sprite sheets containing furniture and items that could be used in the game scenes. Additionally, I made sprite sheets for the Apothecary and Cemetery, which I will feature in an upcoming devlog. Moving on to player customization, I recognize the importance of offering players a high level of personalization. After extensive research, I decided to use skeletal animation which involved drawing each body part, head, arms, legs, facing in eight different directions to allow for skin color, hair color, and clothing combinations. This demanding process was well worth it, as I was able to import the design into Unity as a PSB file and use bones and lib solver components to bring the character to life. I recorded a breathing animation, and with the addition of an axe to the player's hand, I was pleased with the outcome. While I still have room for improvement for animating the walk and run cycle, I'm excited for what the future holds for Crimson Hollow. As I progressed with the game development, I delved into designing the game's user interface, which was a crucial aspect of the player's overall experience. I was determined to create a UI that was both visually appealing and unobtrusive. I opted for muted colors with the exception of color headers and banners to maintain a consistent look and fill throughout the game. To start, I created a pause menu that would allow players to take a break and adjust settings as needed. Then I worked on a dialogue box that would appear when players talk to NPCs. 
providing a clear and concise way to convey important information. I also began working on a player journal that would contain crucial information about recipes, quests, and relationships with NPCs. For the magical pouch that the player carries with them at all times, I put a lot of thought into designing an inventory UI that would be intuitive and easy to use. I wanted players to be able to quickly access and manage their items without getting bogged down in complex menus. To that end, I spent a lot of time tweaking the layout and testing different button sizes and placements. In addition to designing the UI, I also created a variety of inventory items to fill the pouch. As a finishing touch, I created a sound script that would play whenever the pouch or journal was clicked open and closed. I thought this added a nice immersive element to the game and helped make the inventory feel more real. As a moon played a significant role in the game, I decided to draw out the Crimson Moon Cycle loading screen and created an asynchronous load script for the moon cycle animation. This was not only visually appealing, but it also tied in perfectly with the game's overarching themes. When I did a test build run, I found out that the game is still pretty small and it loads too quickly to enjoy the animation. Nevertheless, in the future, as the game size increases, this should play out like a normal load bar. Lastly, I also created media materials for the official website, such as the game's small and large logos and I repeated the moon motif in their design. I'm proud of how much I've been able to accomplish so far, but there's still a lot of work to be done. The five main features I would like to implement into the game are crafting, a relationship system, building system, a merchant system, and character customization. A more comprehensive list of these features can be found on the official website. In the coming devlogs, I'll be sharing more updates on the game's progress, including new features, art assets, and gameplay mechanics. I'll also be talking about some of the challenges I've faced during development and how I'm working to overcome them. If you're interested in following the development process or learning more about the game, be sure to check out my official website, social media links, and Discord. I'm excited to share more with you as Crimson Hollow continues to take shape, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next devlog.